Hello friends, this video on neat evolution is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now the next factor is isolation. So what is isolation? So isolation refers to the prevention of interbreeding groups to mate by physical and biotic barriers. So when we talk about isolation, the term isolation means uh, staying in isolation. That means not in connection with others. So isolation here means that when you do not allow interbreeding groups to mate amongst themselves. So how would you prevent them from mating? So you could give some physical barriers so that you know they kind of cannot come in touch with each other. So when we mean what we mean by physical barriers. So physical barriers basically talks about geographic location like you put those interpreting groups into different geographic locations. So obviously they would not be able to see each other so they'll not be able to mate amongst themselves. The next barrier could be the biotic barriers. What do we mean by biotic barriers? So biotic barriers is anything related to the living organism like behavioral barrier or genetic barrier. These could come under biotic barriers. So when we talk about biotic barriers, it could be genetic barriers or behavioral barriers. And when we talk about physical barriers, we are primarily talking about the geographic barriers, that is the location barriers. So that is called isolation. Now what happens when we do this? So let us look at some more types of isolation like geographical isolation. So population of organisms separated from exchanging genetic material with other organisms of the same species. Now even though the organisms belong to the same species, but still they are not allowed to you know, mate with each other. Why? because they are in different locations and why are they in different locations so this geographic isolation can happen as a result of any accidents or coincidence for example during an, a very heavy flood it might happen that a lot of organisms got carried away to some other place a lot of them would also die but those which survived maybe some of them were carried away to a very far location so what happened the same organisms of the same species they got isolated geographically Right? So these organisms no more can mate with the organisms of the same species in the previous location. So that's geographic isolation. Now another type of isolation could be reproductive isolation. So what is this reproductive isolation here? Different species may live in the same area but properties of individuals prevent them from interbreeding. So even though the species are in the same location but still they are not able to interbreed. Why? Because of the properties of themselves. For example, under reproductive isolation, you can talk about seasonal isolation. Now, there could be many different types of reproductive isolation. So one such type could be seasonal isolation. So seasonal isolation means basically there are certain organisms which mate in a particular season. Right? So there might be some other organisms which do not mate in that particular season. So obviously those two organisms cannot mate with each other. So that is seasonal isolation. Similarly, you might have a gametic isolation. So what, what do we mean by that now? So when we say gametic isolation, that means it is also possible that gametes of two uh, different groups of organisms are not compatible with each other. So since the gametes are not compatible with each other, the gametes do not fuse together. So fertilization doesn't happen. So reproduction doesn't happen. So that is gametic isolation. Another reason could be hybrid sterility. Now this also happens that in, in a lot of organisms, the hybrids which are produced, they are sterile. For example, when the reproduction happens between a male horse and a female donkey or a female horse and a male donkey, the hybrids which are produced, they are sterile. Now since the hybrids are sterile, what happens? They are sterile, they are not capable of reproduction. So obviously reproductive isolation comes into picture. It could also be, there could be another factor that is psychological isolation. Psychological isolation in the sense that the, the psychology of a particular group of organisms would might be working in such a way that they kind of are not comfortable or they are not ready to uh, mate with 
a particular organism of a particular group. So these could be different uh, factors which governs this reproductive isolation. But overall, when you look at this phenomenon of isolation, here what happens, we do not allow different groups of organisms to mate with each other. So as a result, what happens? We are, you know, kind of uh, affecting the type of gene present in that population because if they are also allowed to mate, the genes that would be there would, would be different from the genes which are there right now. So that way is this is also contributing. So isolation is definitely contributing to genetic variation. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.